Well, hello and welcome to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. We're going to talk a little bit men's golf. As last week, the men's golf team took their talents to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as they hosted the Wildcat Cup at Brickyard Crossing. Joining us are, uh, now from the men's coaching staff is Associate Head Coach Keith Ruberg and Director of Golf uh, Lauren Oak. And uh, guys, uh, I know, I'll, I'll just talk with you, uh, mm -hmm. ask you first, Lauren, yeah. but I know that that Wildcat Cup at Brickyard, it's a tournament where over the years teams love to come and play yeah. and be a part of it. And you yeah. get a lot of teams who show a lot of yeah. interest in that. Yeah, it's a great venue. It's a well-known course in the golf industry. They host professional events. They host amateur events. So for us to be able to be there at that kind of a place with, again, the Indianapolis uh, you know, reputation of the Brickyard is, uh, is really a fantastic opportunity. Well, uh, Keith, uh, the guys finished second out of 19 teams. I think just, what, maybe six or seven strokes out of first place uh, uh, when it was all said and done. Um, but what were your expectations going into that? I mean, obviously you played to win the game, but yeah. um, were you happy with the way you guys played and where you finished? Yeah, pretty much so. I mean, I expected us to win. I mean, not to be cocky or arrogant, <laughs> but I mean, we've got a solid team and uh, there was, I think, Bellevue was 25, and I know we've been ranked as high as 21, mm -hmm. so I, I knew there'd be a pretty good chance. We came out of the gates pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't feel good about the second day until I saw all the other scores coming in. The wind picked up a little bit, so wasn't great, but wasn't terrible. It mm -hmm. was one of the lower for the second day, too, so mm -hmm. it just, just a little bit short, you know, mm -hmm. a putt here, a putt there. Got to talk to him about Cameron, Cameron Lushka, the, the medalist for mm -hmm. this. Uh, he, he played extremely well. Uh, the first day, I think, was it was 65, maybe, yeah, or something 65, like that? Yeah. Um, <coughs> but he's not only played well there, but he's been playing well mm -hmm. uh, all spring long, hasn't mm -hmm. he? He sure has. He's one hiccup away from winning the first three tournaments in the spring. Uh, he's, it's a talent that I've been waiting to come out. It's been there all along. Uh, he is really... Uh, rise to the challenge. Uh, now it's a matter of when you have a, a, a really good round like that, mm -hmm. it's hard to come back a second day and not expect to do the same thing. And, and it's, he, he held it together. Uh, we talked about, you know, just shoot a good round, put a round of even par, let them chase you. And um, he, he did exactly that. Well, we're taking a look at some of the uh, highlights, if you will, from that day. And it mm -hmm. was actually a beautiful setting, beautiful uh, yeah. couple days out there. but. Um, Maybe give us an idea who we're watching here and, and, and uh, what your impressions were. Yeah, these are guys on uh, a variety of the holes there. Some of the, the par three that has a creek that run along, runs along it is quite, uh, quite a challenging hole. That's Jacob Kidd, our left-handed Canadian, so we're, we're proud of getting one of those in here. <laughs> There's something uh, about a left-handed yep, Canadian. <laughs> that's right, right? A little, little mic weir for you, but uh, yeah, no, so, um, you know, these are challenging greens. You can see some of the undulations uh, in those greens, and you can see some of the hazards mm -hmm. that surround the holes. So. You know, for Cam to go 65 on a quality course like this from the tees that we play, oh, that's a good <laughs> capture there. Yeah. Coach, you could explain that one. Uh, yeah, I've never done that. Yeah, that does right? not look next. <clears throat> that was uh, Nick Shad. That's hole 10 there. Yep. No, that was not textbook, but, uh, <laughs> yep. But, but, and, and, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the Brickyard, but yeah. you guys get to play on some amazing courses. Yeah. There's some great courses here in Indiana. I know uh, mm -hmm. Wildcat Invitational coming up in just mm -hmm. a couple of weeks yep. or next weekend. Yep. Uh, down at uh, Sagamore. That's yep. a newer club, isn't it? Sagamore, it, it, it is more uh, of a newer course, uh, and it'll be our first time hosting there, which mm -hmm. will be great. Mm -hmm. We know some of the members there, and, and uh, they've agreed to, to host us. So that's a, an outstanding design. That venue is one of the hidden gems in, in Indiana. Yeah. I think it's been around between five and ten years, so okay. fairly new. A Nicholas course. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a Jack Nicholas course. <clears throat> They've had some NCAA uh, regionals there. Mm -hmm. uh, Bryson, uh, Bryson DeChambeau's played there. Um, it is it is a quality quality course. Mm -hmm. uh, you know if you if you talk to a guy that's played a lot of golf and you mention that they know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So well, I wanted to get back to really quick uh, um, just talking about the difference. You mentioned the difference between day one coach and, and day two and, and uh, um, I mean Conditions are different, but they set the course up differently, though. So it is, yep. sometimes you see these, well, you know, people maybe 
uh, folded or choked on a day two. Not necessarily, the, the, the course might be set up a little more yeah. difficult. No, and you definitely see that even in professional rounds, yeah. like fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That course is set up differently, and on mm -hmm. Sunday, if you're making a lot of birdies, you're doing it from some tough spots. Yeah. So we had even a rule change from, from day one to day two because of the softness of the course. The first day, we let the guys uh, pick clean and play, so clean off their ball because there's mud on it, mm -hmm. but it dried out a little better. And the second day, we just said, play it down, play it as it lies. So those conditions can also mm -hmm. make a difference, uh, just the local rules that you have going. So. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that, that come to bear on a round of golf. Certainly the wind and, uh, and the temperatures and the moisture, all those kinds of things. You also have the, um, the effect of you're in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, yes. you're in the competition. Right. Mm -hmm. The first day you're out there, you're throwing up a number. You know, we're, we're two back going into day uh, two. Now all of a sudden, probably teams one through five are feeling a little bit more pressure mm -hmm. than teams six through 19 because um, they're trying to win. And mm -hmm. so you're, you tighten up a little bit and that's when you kind of figure out, you know, is all that, all that practice and, mm -hmm. and is, is, is it gonna come out? Am I gonna stay fundamentally sound? Mm -hmm. Typically the teams that stay fundamentally sound, you know, they don't have the three putts or the errant shots or bad decisions uh, usually come out on top. Well, maybe we talked about the Wildcat Invitational coming up, but I know the big match maybe uh, of the spring or one of the big mm -hmm. matches mm -hmm. is the conference sure. uh, coming up at the end of the month, mm -hmm. be up in, I think, South Bend That's area. right, yep. Um, going into that, maybe goals, expectations. What's at stake at that conference conference meet? Yeah, you've got a trip to the national tournament. I mean, that's the primary at stake besides winning the conference mm -hmm. tournament, you know, I mean, but that's your ticket to get to the, the big time, uh, you know. So guys are certainly very dialed in. All teams are dialed into that. Coach, talk a little bit about expectations, you know, in terms of how our guys are looking at it. Yeah. Well, you know, I was glad to see it at Blackthorn. We mm -hmm. played there earlier mm -hmm. uh, this year, well, in the fall, uh, and won it, and, you know, Taylor's a great team. They mm -hmm. have a bunch of good players, mm -hmm. and we beat them there. So I was more than happy to, to play at Blackthorn again. But, you know, when the pressure's on, you know, usually the, the top, they say the cream rises, yeah. you know, we'll have the top three teams battling it out. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully, you know, if we can, you know, like I said, stay just fundamentally sound and, and make good choices, we'll, uh, we'll come out on top. All right. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, uh, thanks so much again for joining us. Great sure. to talk a little men's golf. Hopefully yep. we'll have some good weather down right. the stretch here for <laughs> yeah, you guys. Absolutely. All right. Once again, uh, coming up for the men's team, the Wildcat Invitational down in Noblesville. Well, when we come back, we'll talk some to some outstanding student athletes from the men and women's tennis team. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The men and women's tennis teams hosted the Wildcat Invitational with 30 teams participating. And joining us today are some of the top players from the men and women's teams, Eli Steiner and Alex Mella. So guys, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Eli, your first time on the show. Yes. But Alex, you were here, we can't decide if it was a year or two ago, yeah. but <laughs> you're a returning star. So <laughs> Let, let's start with you just so people kind of uh, get an idea of who you are and where you're from. We'll start with you, Alex. But kind of just uh, where your hometown is, mm -hmm. what you're studying, and uh, give us an idea like when you, way back when, were in high school, kind of why did you choose IWU? Um, I'm from Libertyville, Illinois. Um, my major is athletic training, and way back when in high school, I just played a lot of tennis because mm -hmm. my dad's my coach, so it's mm -hmm. like you have no option but to play yeah. tennis. <laughs> And I heard about I because my sister played here, mm. and she was also athletic training. So I'm just following, kind of her footsteps. <laughs> yeah. So you were familiar with the school. Now you mm -hmm. were telling me before the show, as an athletic training major, for you, you're looking at maybe going to kind of uh, physicians assistant physician assistant school. So athletic training would be a uh, one of the majors that could lead yeah. into that. So maybe graduate or PA school in the future for you. Mm -hmm. All right, Eli, uh, you're a sophomore, but where's your hometown? Leo, right, side of, right outside of Fort Wayne. And what are you studying? I'm studying youth ministry. Awesome. And so in the future, you'd like to work maybe in a church setting yeah. as youth pastor? Youth pastor. How did you hear about Indiana Wesleyan and what kind of prompted you to decide to come here? Yeah, so 
Um, I grew up going to camps here. Mm -hmm. My uh, denomination is missionary, and we had a lot of church camps mm -hmm. at IWU, especially uh, in middle school. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, grew up playing tennis since I was six. Uh, knew IWU had an exceptional tennis program. And then our junior year, I uh, accepted a call to uh, ministry and pastoral ministry. Awesome. I'm going to ask you, Alex, a little more tennis-related stuff. Um, it's a long season. I mean, mm -hmm. your season really is the whole year because in the fall, um, you play the conference portion of your schedule. Um, so if we look back on the, on, on the women's side, it was a really successful fall. You guys were the regular season and mm -hmm. conference uh, champions. Uh, that got you automatic bids to the national championship, which will be later on in the spring. But can you kind of summarize what that fall was like and, and, and how your team was playing? Um, usually in the fall, we just crush it because we're just one of the best teams in conference. <laughs> Um, where spring is very different, we play top 25 teams mm -hmm. in the nation and give us more competition till we get to nationals, which is good for us because we get um, prepared for our national tournament. Well, it's similar with the guys, Eli. Uh, the spring schedule is loaded with top mm -hmm. teams, a lot of top 25 teams. Right, right now, the guys, uh, Wildcats, are what ranked number 22 in the country, but. Um, uh, you'll be already, you, you're, you're headed for nationals as well already, uh, the guys, uh, regular season champions in the uh, uh, tournament. Stubbed your toe a little bit in the tournament yeah. championship against Marion, so, um, <laughs> but has that played into the spring Yeah, so we actually don't get a bid to nationals if we don't win regular season. So this spring season has mm -hmm. been really mm -hmm. uh, tough. We've had to uh, push ourselves a mm -hmm. lot more than usual to get that, that um, open bid um, mm -hmm. that a team doesn't get from winning season conference. Coming up next, well, let, let's go back. We, we talked about tournament uh, last week. I mean, 30 teams. I think it was mm -hmm. over three days. Um, it's got uh, it's got to be like just a funny, exciting atmosphere to be around, and mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of great competition. But um, coming out of that last invitational, give us an idea of how the guys are playing and 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 just what that experience was like. Yeah. Uh, we actually beat the number 11 team in the nation uh, last weekend, so we were playing really well at that point. We played well the whole weekend, uh, just the last two matches were some uh, top 10 teams. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd say we're playing at a high level right now. We just need more opportunities to play teams ranked ahead of us. And Alex, uh, the women's teams currently ranked number 9 in the nation. You guys mm -hmm. are in top 10. But uh, you talked about how tough the spring schedule is. Yeah. But it's really prepping you to be able to go to nationals and, and, and compete against the best and see how, how well you guys can do. So um, uh, what is that build up like though for the national tournament and how does this hard schedule prepare you for it? Um, our hard schedule prepares us because we play a lot of matches mm -hmm. um, and it's fun to play the better teams because we just learn from it mm -hmm. even though we lose sometimes but we just learn from it and try to come back and try to beat a higher ranked team than us and it just helps us mentally and physically to get ready for nationals. Well guys again uh, you got a few more matches before nationals uh, uh, come up at the end of the month but congratulations on uh, a great season so far and thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. All right as we said the men and women's teams will be ba back in action against Olivet Nazarene University on Friday April 12th that match time is 4 p.m. Well, when we come back, Michaela Woodfork will bring us the breakdown and we'll talk to the football coaching staff as they prepare for their spring scrimmage. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. Just a minute, we're going to talk some football, but before that, we send it over to Michaela Woodfork with the breakdown. Thanks, Roger. Softball had a doubleheader against Taylor. The first game ended in a win for the Wildcats with a score of 11 to 8, but then they lost the second game 6 to 1. The baseball team played one game against Grace and got a nice win with the score ending in 20 to 16. The men's golf team competed in the two-day Wildcat Cup and came in second place. The team finished with a score of 596, just six strokes behind first place team Bellevue University, who finished at 590. And Cardinal Stritch was on the Wildcats' coattails in third place with a score of 597. The women's golf team finished fourth at the USF Invitational with a score of 631. 
In first place was Indiana Tech with a score of 6-11. In second place, St. Francis with 6-13. And in third, Northwestern Ohio with 6-27. Men's tennis competed in the IWU Invitational and went up against William Woods University and Lindsey Wilson. They fell to both teams lo losing 5-0 against William Woods and 5-2 against Lindsey Wilson. The women's teams also competed against both of those teams and were able to beat one of the teams. They lost to William Woods 5-1 but were able to beat Lindsey Wilson 5-0. Finally, the track and fields teams participated in the George Glass Invitational. For the men, Brendan Coyle earned NAIAA standards in both shot put and discus. Adrian Howard earned first place in the 800 meter at a time of 1 minute and 54 seconds. And Stephen I earned the first in 3,000 steeple at 9 minutes and 55 seconds. For the women, the 4x8 relay team earned first place at a time of 9 minutes and 45 seconds, and Paige Sutter earned first place in shot put and in discus. Well, that's all I have for you this week on The Breakdown. Back to you, Roger. Well, thank you, Michaela. Now the football team is preparing for their intra-squad scrimmage coming up this Saturday. Joining us now in the studio are some of the coaches who will be in charge of a couple groups this weekend. So. I'm going to start with you, Coach Ekins, and here to my right. Uh, why don't you guys just introduce yourselves and uh, give us give us an idea of uh, what what your position uh, or assignment is? Yeah, I'm Brett Ekins, and I coach the offensive line here. Uh, Eric Terrazas, I'm the offense coordinator, and I coach quarterbacks. JJ Clark, defensive coordinator, and we'll be the defensive backs. Josh Waldron, I coach defensive line. All righty, well, guys, uh, it's hard to imagine, it's hard to believe, but. Uh, uh, we're already to that uh, spring spring game. And, and, and Coach Terrazas, I'll start with you. The format of this, it's not really a spring game. It's kind of a controlled scrimmage. But just give us really briefly kind of like what the format of, of this uh, scrimmage was. Yeah, we'll do a, we'll do a quick warm-up. We'll do some one-on-ones um, both in the, in the back half and in the front half. And then we're just going to kind of put the ball down and play some football. So offense is making drives and trying to score, and the defense is trying to stop us. And... Uh, so we'll do a little bit of that. We'll end with uh, two two-minute drills. Um, so you're going to see about six, seven, potentially eight drives um, total, and then a couple two-minute drills to end the day there on Saturday. Um, I'll go over to Coach Aldrin here really quick because you've been around. You and Coach Terraza, so kind of some of the originals, yeah. you know, with uh, Coach Langs. But um, the biggest difference you've seen in maybe in this team between the end of last season and now this spring. Can you, can, this is the first spring we've had like this. Yeah. Can you kind of just give an idea of how it's gone and maybe where you've seen some improvements and, and kind of what the, the feel around the program is? Yeah, I think the, the biggest improvement I would say is just physical maturity. Um, last spring, all these guys were still fresh out of high school and now here we are like a year later and these guys are running a little bit faster, hitting a little bit harder. Um, so you can just definitely see that these guys have started to grown up and put on more weight, which is big this game. Um, and I think it's just an excitement. The guys got to come into the spring, kind of know what to expect. You know, everything isn't as new as it was when they were all new freshmen and the program was brand new. So I think for them, it's it, they get to come into this with a little bit more experience. And I think that definitely goes a long way for their confidence. Well, you talked about the size and maturity of Coach Aikens. I think this kind of fits right in with <laughs> the offensive line because um, the reality is that's a part of a young team, a new team that has to be grown and developed and takes time but you're you're newer uh, been on campus for a couple months just kind of impressions of where uh, this offensive line group stands right now and, and and what you're seeing what you like and what you'd like to improve upon well I'll, I'll tell you this I I was really impressed when I first got here with the recruiting job that the coaches did um, the, the people that we have here on the <coughs> offensive line the, the student athletes um, you know, they, they, they definitely found good ones and good men of character and, and great football players. Um, their off-season work has been, has been great. Uh, I see them developing uh, as we would expect them to, uh, and some are, are developing even faster than, than others. So um, really like where we're at, but it is. It's a developmental position, and we've just got to keep developing uh, throughout the summer, getting ready for next year. Um, Coach Clark, again, you're new as well. And um, last season, first season, Coach Lang's head coach and defensive coordinator, we knew he was looking for someone to ultimately come in and fill that position. 
uh, he found that guy in yourself. But give us an idea of kind of maybe like oh, what that's been like for you in terms of now taking over this the defense side of football and and um, kind of like what you want to see out of Wildcat football on the defensive side. Yeah, uh, well, Jordan and I, fortunately, Coach Langs and I, we've been able to work together before and uh, both be on the same defensive side of the football. So uh, when I came in, a lot of uh, a lot of our players knew that we were going to speak a very similar language in terms of just our base structure and, and calls and things like that. Uh, we've already implemented a lot of things that maybe they didn't do last year, but just to have some mental hooks that we could come in and um, – we weren't starting from scratch, mm-hmm. from scratch, really. So that that was that was huge to to have that, but also um, just to have some some trust with a, with someone that I've I've worked with before and that he's worked with me before. Um, that we're able to have some some easy conversations. It might be tougher for a defensive coordinator who came in, took over a defense for a head coach that didn't really have that relationship. So that's been that's been really really helpful. Uh, from a defensive side, really even more so than any schematics and X's and O's, uh, we want a few things. We want our guys to play really, really hard with great effort. A word you'll hear us use a lot is, is strain. I mean, just giving tremendous effort. And that's one thing that's great about defense is you can cover a lot of mistakes if you just play really, really hard and run really, really hard to the football. Uh, so that's something that we're demanding from our guys. Uh, another thing that we'll talk a lot about is communication and alignment. Just getting our calls, making sure we're lined up properly. Uh, if we do that, we communicate, we get aligned, and we play really, really hard, we've got a chance, we think. Uh, we've got a fighting chance. Coach uh, Tarazas, I know, <clears throat> uh, being the offensive coordinator, season one, uh, it was certainly, uh, I think, surprised maybe a few people, maybe didn't surprise you, but um, Wildcats were able to put some points on the board, move the football. Um, where do you see this offense going now, though, in the spring and the next summer? Where, where would you like to see growth and maybe improvement? Yeah, I mean, there's always things that you look for at the end of the season, and um, I thought we had a great uh, year in year one, um, and we have a lot to build off of. Um, we're just going to continue to try to put our guys in the best position to be successful on, uh, on every given play. And obviously you saw a little bit of that last year. We used a lot of people in our offense. We're going to u- utilize a lot of personnel and be multiple within our personnel. So um, we definitely looked at some things, and we, we added a few things that we think can fit uh, the type of – uh, not only talent that we have, but the personnel groupings that we like to use. So um, from a development standpoint, our guys, like these guys have said, have worked really hard and have made tremendous improvements physically. Um, for us offensively, it's a, a large part of it is mental. Um, so for them to understand our scheme and what we're trying to do on any given particular play is really important. And I think that was kind of the, the biggest thing that we've accomplished over the last five weeks in spring is just a mental um, capacity just to continue to learn our scheme. Last question, and, and, and getting back to the scrimmage on Saturday, you're going to have the offense in white, the defense in red. Um, th- and there are some uh, um, ways that the defense can score points with getting stops and stuff like that. But is there anything on the line here? I mean, like uh, winners get steak, losers hot dogs, <laughs> or anything like that? Or uh, What's on the line here, Coach Aldrin? What's on the line? Pride? Yes. Pride, uh, I think the offense is buying all of us Poppy's Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting out Great. there. I know a lot of other people are as well. And, and uh, uh, just kind of getting to see another look at the Wildcats. It's hard to believe, but the uh, fall is going to be here before we know it, isn't it? Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for coming on in, talk a little bit of football, and uh, we'll uh, see you on Saturday. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, as we said, don't miss the football spring game. It'll be Saturday, April 13th at Wildcat Stadium, 4 o'clock. Once again, Saturday, April 13th, 4 o'clock. Well, that's all we have for you on this week's episode of Wildcat Week. If you would like to see more of Wildcat Week, you can visit our website, WIWTV.com, and there you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, at WIWTV.com. And you can stay connected with all our local programming by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's WIWTV51. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat Week.